Oh, praise the, praise the Lord. Another exciting day, living for God. As we get closer and closer to Christmas, you start thinking about what God means to you, the birth of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. And Romans says that he won't leave you alone. He won't leave you by yourself. If you confess him, believe with your heart, confess him with your mouth, he won't let you down. And I appreciate Emmanuel, God with us, because there's times I, I don't have nobody to turn to. I can't tell them everything that's wrong with me and everything's going on with my mind and my emotions, and I can lean on God. I can tell him, and he knows me. He knows who I am. He knows my weaknesses and my strengths. I don't have to explain everything to him. I just got to turn to him and ask him to help me, and he's always there for me. He's faithful. Emmanuel, God with us. That's what this is all about, having that relationship restored with the mighty God. What a wonderful day, living for God. How can not that pull on your heart to say, boy, I'm so thankful that I got somebody that loves me so much that he made himself flesh and sacrificed himself on a cross just for me, just for me. Even after he knew me, he still did it. I appreciate that so much. It's a love that's so deep so deep so let's all stand brother isaac take up an offering it's the season to give <clears throat> it's better to give than to receive brother erickson might think that's a little different than what his opinion is but it's still true it's better to give than to receive and uh no brother erickson's a generous man uh god loves a cheerful giver i know everybody they say they say that uh Church has plenty of money. That's what I heard a preacher say. Church has plenty of money. The problem is it's in your pockets. So we just got to get it out of your pockets. That's the challenge. So give unto the Lord today. And let's sing and have a good time living for God. It's a great life. Oh, we have come into this house to praise the Lord. Lift up holy hands. To the great I am, we have come into this house to praise Him. Jesus is worthy to be praised. We have come into this house to praise Him. Oh, lift up holy hands. To the great I am, we have come into this house to praise Him. Jesus. To be praised, we have come into this house to praise Him. Oh, let's lift up holy hands to the great I am. We have come into this house to praise Him. Jesus is worthy to be praised. We have come into this house to praise Him. Oh. Holy hand to the great I am. We have come into this house to praise Him. Jesus, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah! Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You are so worthy, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Lift up and magnify your name. Oh, hallelujah. Go. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you and honor you. Praise the Lord. Mm. You are so worthy. You are so worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, It is a privilege to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in such a dismal, dark world that we're living in. People's lives are, uh, I suppose we have a hard time seeing what, with good, better, or worse concerning yesterday, but I'll tell you this, that I know that today there are ways that God can help us to be able to have a much greater life. And that's, that's what church is all about. It's finding out those things that I, maybe, I don't know what you're, if you're like I am, but I have looked back on some things and all of a sudden when the lights came on and I understood a principle or, or what I was doing wrong, what I could do to do right with God, it was like um, all of a sudden it made sense. And um, I was able to make that step and it was exciting in God. And I pray that today this simple message today would be something that you would be able to grab hold of and um, it would bless your heart. Looking forward to this week and this time uh, to be able to have our schedules a little bit different and, and be able to enjoy uh, one another. Looking forward to all the fellowship we're going to have. And um, amen. And all next week is going to be a lot of fun. Turning your attention this morning, if you want to stand with me, to John chapter number 5. Just reading one verse to uh, put my focus on this verse today, verse number 4. John 5 and 4. Amen. The Bible said, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> There's a lot that is said in the Word of God concerning wholeness. It's not just a cheap filler word. It has significant definition and purpose today. And I, <clears throat> it really boils down to the question of saying, what do I really need from God? What, what are my needs and, and how do I uh, receive and draw closer to the Lord I believe that God is not caught off guard with any of our actions or reactions. And yet I also believe that he's waiting for his word to become dynamic in your life and give you the answer that you truly need. And so there thus is the life of a Christian, trusting God, wanting to say, yes, I believe, uh, but always having to come to that place saying, Lord, show me, show me. Amen. So I want to pray to you or preach to you this morning about wholeness wholeness. And would you pray with me right now, Lord, I pray that you would bless the word of God. Thank you for your word, your anointed word. Lord, I pray that you would speak to every heart today. God, every life, Lord, was under touch today. And Lord, we'll give you thanks and praise. For Lord, our trust is in you. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. And so, Lord, let our faith be inspired. Let our faith be alive today. Let our faith be committed for your will to be done in our lives. I pray, Lord, today that our faith, oh God, uh, be awoke, uh, awakened, uh, that it be in a place today where we'll say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Lord, I pray that you would give us the fire of your spirit, that you would give us a desire in our hearts today. God, that you'd awaken us and don't let, uh, allow us to be lethargic, uh, allow us to be lazy, allow us to be, Lord, complacent, but let us be, oh God, dynamic today, wanting God's will and purpose in our life. For we ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. The Bible, excuse me, the dictionary simply says, concerning defining the word wholeness, it simply means to be complete 
or harmonious whole. Uh, another word you might be familiar with would be also unity, wholeness today. The Greek uh, definition that from the Bible in the New Testament is a word that simply means to be healthy. It means to be well. It means to be sound or whole. Amen. Talk to me about a witness of a drunk person today on some city street in some city here in the United States today. Now, I can't do a drunk look very well. Probably I have. I just didn't see myself when I did it <clears throat> years and years and years ago. But he, you can ask him, hey, do you believe in Jesus Christ? He said, well, sure. Everyone believes in Jesus Christ. And he goes on to start to tell you how to be saved. <laughs> well, how rich is the word of God in his mouth? He could quote scripture, and if he is living in that place of destitute, in the gutter, with vomit, and unclean, and disconnected, and loss of family, and loss of connectivity, and loss of individualism, and loss of strength, and loss of values, and you would say, why on earth would I ever find salvation from someone that doesn't have it all together. There were kings who came and met and listened to Paul as he began to tell them of the gospel. And King Agrippa could say, almost all together am I persuaded. If we want a light today in Chelsea, Oklahoma, if we want to be uh, and have victory in our lives like God really wants us to have, I assure you that wholeness is the foundation of everything we should achieve in Jesus Christ. Until we realize and understand today that I don't just want God to be my Santa Claus and to be able to say, I want, I want, I want, I want, I wish, I wish, I want. Lord, I'm, if I say in Jesus' name, I expect you to jump. I want that new car in Jesus' name. May you get a matchbox. <laughs> Joking. Praise God. I'm telling you today, that victory in your life is getting all your ducks in a row. <laughs> victory in your life, I'm not saying, listen, you've got your personality, you've got your problems, you've got your crisis, you've got your family, you've got your boss, you've got your neighbors. God has got all sorts of ways to, to scratch your little world. He's got all sorts of ways to aggravate even a, a young man hidden in the household of his mom and dad. Harassing Jacob. And so God gave Jacob a job. And he gave his boss to be his father. That's aggravation. It was the only way he could reach him. I'm kidding. I think very highly of Jacob, and I, I think he knows I'm kidding him. But what I'm talking about today. We're not talking about fixing all the jerks around you. We're not preaching about today of fixing the world. And I wish we had a different president. And I wish we had a different uh, Republicans and Democrats. And I wish we had a different program and process. And, and I wish we had this and I wish we had that. My friend, you can keep on wishing and keep on voting. But understand me today, I'm preaching today that you're going to have to want God to do what he wants to do in your life. 
You're going to have to realize today that it's more than just coming to church and getting a quick fix. It's more than just, God, fix my problem. But, oh, God wants to come in. He wants to fix you. Oh, let me re- reveal to you today uh, an awesome God who, who doesn't necessarily promise that he'll change the obstacle, that he'll fix the jerk in your life, that he'll go around the dilemma. Oh, no, I'm preaching about a God today who said, be ye whole. Amen. The Bible said the woman overwhelmed with sickness, trying to find the source, trying to cut this thing off at the root, trying to fix the the issue in her life. Twelve years she fought with this disease, something to do with her blood. Twelve years she tried to fix the problem. And one day when she got around Jesus, she had this revelation. She had the lights come on. Oh, yeah, there were oppressive people. Yeah, there were mobs of people all around Jesus. But she found a way, and she made her way. And she said to herself, if I could but just touch the hem of his garden I, garment, I will be made whole. I'm preaching the difference between your problem and your wholeness today. The difference between your dilemma and your wholeness today. What if I told you a scriptural principle is this? If God can fix you, everything else will fix itself. How many times have I wanted to last shout at my wife? Because I disagreed with her, whatever it was, whatever it is, over the 42 years, you know. I'm fortunate to still be married. I probably don't deserve to be. But I, one day I went to a marriage uh, conference, you know, where our organization had a marriage retreat, we called them, and Something one of those men said, something to the fact of, uh, you change, and I promise you she will change. Oh, that hit me right there. Because I could understand that. Don't you wish you could go back and change some of your years of wonderful marriage that you didn't? You didn't build the battle at the wrong place. It wasn't that issue at all. That's, that's not what the issue was. Unfortunately, we can't change those things, but we can become what God wants us to be. Yeah, this, this story, the verse I read today, is a, is a man with a palsy that was at the, at the pool of Siloam place of healing. Once a year the angel of the Lord would come and and would 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 make the waters troubled and and the first person every year, the first person who got and got their foot into the water first, the Bible said they were made whole. Well what was the issue? Well Jesus came along that day and he looked at all these people that needed healing. Who knows how many were there? It was actually Five pools, right? Who knows how many were there? And Jesus saw this one man. And what does the Bible say? He saw the hopelessness of his condition. This man had the attitude of, what's the use of even trying? Life is passing by. I have no more hope. I'm not young anymore. If I didn't have this thing wrong with me, I wouldn't be in this position. And the scripture simply says, Jesus perceived 
he dealt with a man's definition of wholeness. He dealt with the issue of what he really wanted and what he really needed. I'm convinced today God is doing that in your life and mine every day today. Amen. The more I figure this out, the older I get and the little bit smarter I'm getting. Not smart, just a little bit smarter. <laughs> and I'm understanding today what God is doing. He said, it's taken a while, Kev, to get you to where you are now. <laughs> That's the good news. The bad news is it's going to take you a while longer to get you where I want you to go. <laughs> I'm preaching today, such a simple thought, but God wants you to change your, your thinking about what you need versus what's going on in your life. We give Santa Claus, we shouldn't, but it's been said that some people give Santa Claus a list of things that they want. This is not a matter of what we want today. It's a matter of God's will being performed and fulfilled in your life. It's this incredible place of peace and growth. That's what Brother Nance said last night was a tremendous thought. Peter talks to us about adding to your faith virtue and knowledge, temperance and patience. Because God is working a work in our lives. Yes, the fruit of the Spirit is just one fruit. It's not all different types of fruit on one tree. Patience and love and, and forgiveness and, and faith and all these things. No, it's all one fruit waiting to be explored in your life. Waiting for there to be a need in your life for those things to become the very wholeness God wants to give you. Now wait, wait. How often have we chosen to take the easy route, the quick fix, what is seemingly less issues for us but not completing and, and, and obtaining the outcome that God really wants. See, God's got to get you to want the same thing he wants. God's not going to come in here. He didn't force you to make steps you've made already in him. He didn't force you to receive the Holy Ghost. He didn't force you to get baptized in Jesus' name. He didn't force you to do anything, does he? But somehow, when we heard and saw the word of God, and we saw the command, and we saw that I could be a participant, and Lord, I could follow and obey Acts 2.38, and, and, and repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promises unto you and to your children, and unto all that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. That this bountiful blessings of God are waiting to come into your life today. And, and I think God wanted us to take those first steps that we would learn. Amen. That, that it was our choice to agree with the Lord. And God came in and did an incredible work. But that work of obedience and that work of desire of pleasing God and God's will being done in our life was something that God wanted to mature and grow and develop. Faith is not only envisioning what you want to happen, but it's also the reality of, of seeing the events unfold and keeping your faith in God no matter what the circumstance. To fix what is wrong in our lives? Yeah, we want that. God, heal my arm. My shoulder hurts. God, I have a headache. Believe me, I do it too. I pray for those things. But I'm asking you today, there's a Savior in your life 
that didn't just forgive you of your sins. He didn't just wipe the slates clean for you. But he said, I'm going to help you over some rough places here. I'm going to give you life and that more abundantly in this life and in the life to come, eternal life. Oh, the things that God has for us today are immense. They are huge. They are beyond our capacity to understand how important they are to us. But would you allow me to just simply preach to you today? It's beyond just fixing what is wrong. God wants a work in your life that will take you to a place where you mature in God, where you begin to love God's word even more than you do right now, that you begin to desire his will even more than you've ever desired before, that he takes you to a place, higher heights than him, where you are fulfilled, where you are happy, where you are victorious, where you are bold in God. Give the woman with the issue of blood credit. She wanted the right thing. She wanted to be made whole. Give the man at the pool of Siloam. No, he didn't know what he needed, but God, let's credit God today knowing what was best and what would help him. How about the one leper of the ten? The Lord forgave them and said, go to the priest and, and, and do the things that they require, obey the priesthood, and, and, and you are going to be cleansed. And can you imagine the fulfillment of finally being right with God again, finally having a right to be able to uh, be reintroduced to my family and to my culture and to my city where I came from. They had cast me out. I've been living in, under rocks and in dens. Because of my leprosy. And now all of a sudden, those nine hurried off to the priest uh, because they understood, oh, it was going to open up a whole new world of opportunity. But that one young man, a uh, Samaritan, uh, turned around and he went back and he worshiped the Lord. And Jesus said, I'm not just going to cleanse you. I'm going to make you whole. What we need today is a God who will not stop with just fix, will not stop and be satisfied with just cleanse, will not stop and be satisfied with just going to be by my problems and my struggles. But he's here today. The Spirit of the Lord is working and moving in our lives. Why? Because God wants to make you whole. There's no way you can fulfill God's plan in your life if you are not what he made you to be. How sin has come in and destroyed us and taken us down the notches of life and that we are no longer able to be able to stand and, and have individuality and say, I am a child of God. Jesus said that only those who wanted to be made whole could be made whole. He said, they that are sick have no need of a physician. No, I just said that wrong, didn't I? He said, those that are whole have no need of a physician. But they that are sick, amen. I did a good job botching that one. The greatest fulfillment of life today, my friend, let me tell you. I don't know what you're getting for Christmas or if it's just coal. <laughs> but the greatest worth of life today is not the biggest and best toys. It's not the biggest and best bank account. It's not the best paying job. Oh, no, my friend. Let me tell you, there's a lot more to your living than those things. But if I could ever explore the depths and riches of Christ Jesus with you, I would begin to tell you of a God who could take away your fear. He can overcome and take away all your shame. He can give you strength in your mind and in your heart, the tenacity to go forward and do his will. The victory, the payoff is a joy unspeakable and full of glory. The glory of living for God with your whole heart. You don't have to be a half-bake. 
God wants you to find the key to success today. Let me tell you what it is. That if you would seek to be made whole, then you will know what valuable really means. For up until then, we've had the enemy sitting on our shoulders telling us how corrupt, how vile, how perverse, how wicked we are. The ultimate today would be able to know my intended purpose. To know today what it means to be a Christian in Chelsea, Oklahoma in 2023, going into 2024. To know today that God has a will, He has a purpose, and if I am a willing vessel, He can use me and I can be a blessing. Oh, I'll tell you what victory, I'll tell you what wholeness is. No longer letting circumstances and fears shape my day and my life. But today, I am what I am by the grace of God. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Today, we stand on God's word. Today, we lift up holy hands to him and without fear or doubting. And we worship him and we love him. God, give us enough money. Give us enough time. Give us our physical health. Give us the vibrancy of life to live it to its, to its greatest value and worth so that I can do your will, so that I can love people, so I can invest in your kingdom that is eternal, so I can care for those who need someone to come alongside them and show them that you care for them. That I can dedicate like David did and say, oh, I want all my life, all the victories, all the things you've allowed me to have in my life are wonderful. But God, I want to leave something that your presence will always be with your people. I want to help build the house of God. You see, your greatest witness today it's your faith, it's your confidence, it's your boldness to live life without worrying about something coming along and entrapping you or shutting you down. It's having a love today, that love I believe, our love grows clearer and clearer as time goes on. The scripture in Proverbs speaks of a light that grows brighter and brighter as that day approaches. A commitment a faithfulness, a trust in the Lord. And no matter what your personality is, it's not part on this list. No matter what your successes or failures have been, it's not on my list. Those things don't matter. Because we're not talking about fixing my problems today. We're talking about making me whole. Would you stand with me today? So here's what Second Peter 1 beginning with verse 4, says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. That's that's purity, that's strength and purity, virtue. I'm true blue to what I believe today. Add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge. And to your knowledge add temperance. And to temperance patience. And to patience godliness. And to godliness brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness charity. For if if, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. 
Can you imagine that day with a woman with the issue of blood? The press, the disciples seemingly rebuking the Lord, saying, Lord, how could you ever know who touched you with this mass of people around you? Lord, don't you know everyone wants to touch you? How could you just pick out one? He said, no, 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 no. Someone touched me for a different reason. And he said, who touched me? And the woman, simply, possibly in shame, being caught, I don't know, but said, Lord, it was I. Great is thy faith. One of the women who met Jesus at the well, yes, he showed her her past and revealed to her that it was aware of, of all the husbands he had, she had had and the guy she was living with right now. All those things became clear, but that's not why the Lord was there. He wasn't there to condemn her. He wanted her to want something better. And she left a water pot that she came to fill. And she ran into the city and said, come see a man. Come see a man. The Gadarean, possessed with untold numbers of devils and hidden. <coughs> he said, what's your name? And all they could say is, we, we're legion. That would be over 1,200 in military, Roman military uh, numerology. And something about this man ran to him and fell at his feet. No, all those devils couldn't keep him. Something about the heart of an individual today, that if you would make a step and make a move toward God, I promise you, he will reward you. And he followed Jesus, and Jesus stopped him, now he's clothed and in his right mind. Wholeness is a picture of his new stance of who he was and what he was doing. And Jesus said, why don't you go to your city and testify what has happened here? They need to see what exhibit A, what you were before, as you lived among this, the cemetery. And you had chains about your neck and your hands and your feet. And you roared in the nighttime and you howled at the moon. And you cut yourself with stones. And now let them see you whole. Let them see you now in your right mind, clothed and thankful for a Savior that has touched you. I'm preaching today that Jesus would say, I want you to be whole today. I want you to have a balanced life, trusting me, living for God, excited about all that this kingdom of God has to offer you today in this world and I'd like you to live your life to its fullest we can't do that on our own, we need the Holy Ghost we need, we need Christ in you the hope of glory, the Bible says and so the Lord said repent, get your heart right with God and then do your part to obey, get baptized in Jesus name the Bible said this is a command it's what happened when the apostle was in with Cornelius in his household. They received the Holy Ghost first. He said, man, you need to get baptized tonight. Let God do a complete work in you today. Those of you who have been already filled with the Spirit and baptized in His name and all those things, it doesn't stop there. It's just that's the beginning. Today, today, what about make another step toward the Lord? Amen. God would do a work for you. If these things be in you, they will make you 
great. It'll make you a great value and worth. Can I tell you today, stop worrying about what's wrong and start seeking for God to make your life right. Stop worrying about if there's sin in your life, you can pray and ask the Lord to start helping you to become aware of it, to become, find an avenue to, to take it away out of your life, to go another direction. Yeah, God is so good. But he won't leave you there. He wants to take you on in the newness of life. Praise the Lord. Today, at this Christmas season, when the world is wondering if we should keep Christmas anymore, or just call it Merry Holiday or whatever they're saying nowadays, extracting everything of Christian out of it. But for we who would have faith today, I invite you to make this season so important in your life. Amen. Lord, make me whole this year. Lord, deliver me today that I would be in your image and your likeness. Make me, Lord, not just Lord, one who sees, but Lord, help me to comprehend and to love your presence in my life. Every eye closed, would you lift up your hands to the Lord right now and begin to talk to the Lord on your own? Amen. No certain words are right today. It's, it's just got to come from your heart that, Lord, I want more in you. I, I don't want to be living my life, Lord, only with my abilities, with my talents, with my 401, but God, I want to live my life today full of your spirit. I want to live my life today walking in the Holy Ghost. I want to live my life today with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I want to live with victory. I want to live today, oh God, overcoming all those things, those obstacles in my life. Lord, I want victory today in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. Oh, there is a way, one way to touch Him. I wonder today at this and your love time one week before we are be Christmas Day, the birth of Christ, I wonder if you would be willing to step out of your pew today and say, God, oh, I want to be whole this year. I'm thankful for what you've done already. I don't mean to be anything but thankful, Lord. But God, I want to be whole today. I want to be whole today. God, help me, Lord, with all my weaknesses. Help me, God, all the things I've lost sight of. Help me, God, the things that I've maneuvered around because I didn't want to face them. God, help me, Lord, to face or oh, to call on the Lord, to receive strength from you. Oh, to trust Jesus through this situation. Oh, God, don't just fix it, Lord, but make me what I should be. Don't just help me around the corner, Lord, but help me, God, to be victorious in Jesus Christ. Oh, God, let my heart be open to you today that you would work a work in my life like never before. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's time to want more from the Lord. It's time to seek him for greater understanding. We're none of us are good today. But oh, to have a desire for God's will to be done, that's everything, my friend. That's peace. That's righteousness. That's fulfillment. That's joy. That's good living. Amen.
to be right with Jesus, to be right with my friends and neighbors, to be right today. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I want to be made whole, Lord. Don't just fix what I think is wrong. But Lord, you know me better than I know myself. And so I pray today, oh God, for a touch of your spirit, for a change of my direction, for an understanding of your word, for a closeness with all that is spiritual in my life. Let me be a better husband, a better wife. Let me be a better child, a son, or daughter. Let me be better as a brother or sister. Let me be better today. Let me be someone the church can count on in my life this year to be what you want me to be. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Jesus. Mm. Oh, call on his name. In the day that you seek for me with your whole heart, you will find me. God will not change that promise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Touching Jesus is all that really matters. Have you ever been healed by the Lord? Is that remarkable when you realize the Lord in his infinite love cared so much for you that he came and he healed your body? He fixed that situation. Remember when you made those first steps to the Lord and you repented and you asked God to help you? Oh, what a beautiful thing that was. Amen. Amen. December has been so busy this year. Of course, we could have made it more busy, but I felt like that this is giving us time to be with our family and friends. But I do want to say that on the 7th of January, um, you don't have to do anything for this, but just so you know, brother and sister Rick Hughes are going to be with us. And um, they will, they will um, minister next door with a challenge for us. And then, how many remembers him talking about the apples, the seeds? Yeah. And then they'll be in here preaching and ministering that Sunday morning. And uh, if you know the Hughes, they will do a, a fantastic job. We have a great time ahead of us. And that's all I have planned for, for 2024. It's just that one service. So uh, the rest will come a little bit later. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. And uh, appreciate you, church. Appreciate every time that you seek God. Give God a chance in your life. I know some things are huge in our lives that are problems, but just give the Lord. Keep praying about it. Keep asking God for direction. Amen. And the Lord bless you all today.